So here we are now with the PO14 sub from Teenage Engineering. It's a monophonic bass synthesizer. Um, we have 15 different bass sounds in here. And if you watched our tutorial on the PO12, the rhythm, the drum machine, you'll be familiar with some of these um, methods of working your way around these pocket operators. So I can select one of the sounds here by holding down sound, the sound slot, and go into one of these 16 sound slots here. I said 15 because um, we'll come to it in a bit, but 16 is actually a micro drum machine. So we have 15 different bass sounds in here. So hold down sound and load one of these bass sounds. That's sound one, sound two. And once the sound is loaded, then we have 16 different keys. we can play the sound with and over here we have knob A and knob B and they control different things depending on which sound you have loaded up so we've got this second sound loaded here and it's kind of controlling that knob A is controlling sort of the envelope a little bit and so a bit, a bit crushing it to some extent and knob B is like a low pass filter. And it depends which sound you have loaded there. So say if I have sound free loaded. Knob A is like a sort of drive control. Knob B, a bit of a low pass filter again. And these really do differ depending on which sound you have loaded there. So it's almost like unison now, knob B. Nice little Reese bass. A really fat sound actually for something that's so small, so portable, battery powered, you know, so cheap, and you've got really fat Reese basses, which is pretty nice. And it tends to go as the sounds go up, you tend to get more of the effect sounds. So it's controlling LFO now in our bay. And like I was saying, uh, step 16, or sound 16, sorry, it's a little drum machine. Which is really nice to add a little bit of a rhythmic element to some bass sequences. So we have our different sounds that we can load. Uh, and then next to the sound slot, we have the pattern slot. So we can program in different patterns in here or just load up and recall different patterns. So hit play. And you're constantly writing over patterns. So I can, um, say if I load in one of the patterns here, at the moment it's triggering there, flashing number 10. So let's load in pattern 12. And or we'll load in pattern 15. And you notice when it gets to the end of the pattern, it then triggers the new pattern that you've kind of loaded up there. So pattern 13. But if I say start making some changes in pattern 13 now, so say if I go into right mode, and you notice I hit the right key there, and you get the little record button in the bottom left hand corner, and I can take some sound out of the sequence. Then it's saved into pattern 13. So if I go to pattern 14 now, which is an empty pattern. Uh, there you go, pattern 15. We go back to pattern 13. Those changes we just made are saved into that pattern now. And we can load up, we've got 16 different patterns in here and we can chain these patterns together. And you'll be familiar with this if you watch the tutorial on the rhythm. So say if I, I load up that pattern in pattern one, but I want to load pattern one and then it's, that's pattern two. So I can trigger those two. I can chain those two patterns together by holding down the pattern button, pressing one and then pressing two. And then it will play pattern one followed by pattern two. And keep playing that sequence, pattern one, pattern two. So you can chain up to 16 patterns together and any kind of sequence. So I could, I could trigger like pattern nine, like three times and then pattern 10 once, you know, just hold down pattern, press nine, 
to three times, then pattern 10 once. And whatever patterns we have loaded in there. I've been playing around with these quite a lot now, so a lot of the patterns have been edited from what they come, come bundled with uh, to begin with. So some of them are quite random patterns. So we can also clear patterns very easily, quickly here. If I hold down key and press pattern, and it just clears that pattern. And I can also copy patterns, say, which pattern are we triggering now? Pattern nine. So say if we want to clear pat pattern nine, there you go. Key and then pattern to clear it. Or if you want to copy a pattern, uh, load a pattern that hasn't been cleared. It's actually got some, some stuff going on there. Pattern 15. I can copy it very quickly. Just hold down right and pattern. Number 15 flashes. I can then paste that to say number 14. So now if I trigger number 14, it has the same pattern loaded as 15. You copy it over very quickly, very easily. You have this BPM button here. So I press this, change the BPM to 140. You can see that up there. It says techno there. We've got a techno pace going on. And everything's, all the funky graphics are happening a lot quicker. And the sub, the submarine is firing out these rockets at tempo speed. <laughs> so if you press BPM again, it goes down to hip hop, 80 BPM. Everything slows down. 120 BPM, press it again, 120 BPM, and it says disco there. And then if we want some more fine-tuned controls uh, of the BPM, hold down BPM, and this knob B, I can go right up to 240 BPM, or right down to 60 BPM, and anywhere in between. So we have this um, key button here, so we can add play styles. So this is a combination of like chords, arpeggios, transitions, and we have 16 different play styles we can add in. So hold down key, and number 13 is a bit like an arpeggio, 15, and it stutters things a bit. And then you're writing them into the sequence there, holding down key, and then you're writing that into the sequence. And then you can overwrite it very easily, just holding key, and then it records over it. And then underneath that you have uh, style, so these are effects, and these are the same effects as with the rhythm and as with the factory. So remember number eight is a high pass filter. And I think one is uh, like a low sample rate. And then again, like with the key and the uh, kind of play styles, uh, the effects are written in in the same way. So you can record it into the sequence and then you can record over it, just hold down style and it kind of wipes it out. So you can drop those effects in very quickly, very easily and then drop them out very easily, which is nice for that live sort of setting. So we can program patterns, um, we can before, so if we select sound one and come out of right mode, and um, we wanted to program we can trigger it there, we're just playing. If we wanted to program something in the right mode, go back into right mode, play. And we can take notes in and out of the sequence. And then what we can do, say, we want to edit this note here in this sequence. We wanted to change the key. We hold this down and you can see it says C1 there. Then we can change that to uh, I don't know, G1, E1, D1, C. So, and now it's changed. What I did notice actually is it's only white keys, so no sharps or flats on the pocket operators. So, you 
know, only white keys, you can change it to, but you change the note there, holding it down, and then tweaking knob A, so uh, this first step here, hold this down, go down to F1, and knob B is the envelope, so uh, a bit like decay, so if I hold down this first step, and you notice B, I increase B there, now I've got a really long envelope. And this second step, this is quite a short envelope, I can increase this out down now, hold down this, uh, it's number six. And bringing up that knob B there, and I've got a longer envelope. You can actually bypass that, although you don't have any sharps or flats, you can actually bypass that. Yeah, there is a workaround there using one of the effects, and that's number 13. And the 13 shuffles the note, so I think it shuffles it up one semitone, so adding that effect onto a step will shuffle it up. Say if it was a C1, it would shuffle it up to a C sharp one. So you do get, you can get a sharp or a flat in that way, uh, but then you're using up your effect slot, so you couldn't apply an effect on that step. So that is a workaround if you're really put off by the fact that you only have white keys. Uh, and so we can actually record stuff in on the fly as well as with the rhythm so let's go to say pattern 10 okay that's nice it's um uh it's nice it's clear pattern for us so i mean of course we can program it like that let's load in a different sound Something a bit nicer like that, that. There we go. We can hold down right, and we just record stuff in on the fly. But you need to make sure you're not in right mode when you hold down right. So if you're in right mode, you're going to start changing the sequence. I'll go out of right mode, hold down right mode. And then you can start adding notes to your sequence, it's pretty cool. And just record stuff in live. Now let's go to sound 16. Because this is the drum machine, so a little micro drum in here. So, go out of right mode. 15, 16 different drum sounds. And we can trigger in the same way. We can go in right mode. And step sequence, come out of right mode, hold down right mode. And just play stuff in live. stuff going there and then we can come out and then we can have that on top of the bass sound so I go back and load in sound free and have a bass sound on top so that's the um, PO14 sub monophonic bass synthesizer be sure to check us out in the next video we'll be taking a look at the po16 which is the factory which is the lead synthesizer in this range all right thanks <laughs>